morning. I am Brother Moore. I am the steward pro tem here at Chappelle Memorial AME Church. And at this time, I would like to present the pastoral appointment to our pastor, the Reverend Lester J. Drayton, Jr. Under the protection of Almighty God, certificate of pastoral appointment, study to show thyself a workman approved unto God. This is the African Methodist Episcopal Church. This is to certify that Reverend Lester J. Drayton, Jr. is appointed to the pastoral charge of Chapel Memorial AME Church and said church being under the jurisdiction of the Columbia, South Carolina Annual Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church given under my hand and the, and the denominational seal at the Episcopal Room this 12th day of September in the year of our Lord 2020 signed on behalf of the Annual Conference Samuel L. Green, presiding bishop. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Potem, for the presentation of this pastoral appointment. All right, well, it makes it official that I have in my hand the appointment uh, allowing me to serve Chapel Memorial AME Church again as pastor for another conference here. And we certainly thank God uh, for the opportunity to serve. And we thank our brother Moore for making that presentation. Now uh, that I have been officially been welcomed to serve again, uh, I invite you to join us as we begin this worship experience by praising God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Will you join with me as we pray this morning? Gracious God, our Father, we do thank you for once again giving us the opportunity of worship. And Lord, we thank you for seeing it fit for us to stay together for another year. Now, God, we ask that you, Lord, would convene with us in this moment of worship and this moment of connecting with you. We ask, Lord, that you would take the space that we're in, sanctify it and hallow it for your glory. Move however you see fit so that you, O oh God, will get the glory out of whatever is done during our time together. And Lord, we will not fail or neglect to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise because it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And again, it feels good to uh, once again uh, be back uh, in the uh, house of the Lord to serve you as pastor. But I can't wait for the day to come where we can all do this in person. Amen. Um, and I, uh, again, I just want to shout out to our brother Connie Moore for uh, coming in and making that presentation for us on the day. Listen, this has been a very difficult week for some, and so uh, we are called upon, again, to stand in the gap for them as we lift up those who are standing in the need of prayer. We want to uh, ask that you would remember all those persons who have uh, stopped you along your journey over the past week as it relates to um, the, uh, uh, the 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 tasks that they asked you to pray for them and uh, and remembering them and, and asking that you would uh, uh, just make mention their name uh, when you talk to God. So we ask that you would do that. We want you to remember those who are listed on our prayer list, those persons who are shut in, those persons who are in convalescent centers or in hospitals, as well as those who are still in bereavement. Uh, we ask that you would pray for God's comfort for those who need it, God's healing for those who need it, but most of all, God's presence, because we all need that. Um, and of course, we want to mention uh, the more than 200,000 people who died this year in this country over the coronavirus. We ask that you would constantly mention them in your prayers as well. These are definitely praying times that we need a God who loves us enough to care about us and see about our needs. Now, enjoy these announcements. Good day, everyone. My name is Tawana Gladman, and these are your announcements for the week. 
Our world is very different than it was four years ago, from protests for justice reform and racial inequalities to the handling of a global pandemic. And the only way to bring about the much needed change in our country is through your vote. Remember, the deadline to register to vote or request an absentee ballot is October 5th, 2020. Here's how you can vote by absentee ballot by mail. You can request an absentee application by October 5th, 2020 in one of two ways. Go to scvotes.gov to request an absentee application online or make a request by phone, mail, email, or fax. You will be mailed an absentee application from the voter registration office in your county of residence. Complete, sign, and return your application as soon as possible. Then you will receive an absentee ballot in the mail. Follow the instructions to complete your ballot and return it to the voter registration office in your county of residence before November 1, 2020. To vote in person absentee, you can visit the county voter registration office in your county of residence, complete an application, and cast your ballot. In Richland County, there are some additional early voting sites available. Go to our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com and click Early Voting Calendar for a list of available sites. You may vote absentee in person up until 5 p.m. on the day before the election. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Exercise your right to vote. Every vote matters. Every vote counts. Here are this week's schedule of events. Join us at 11.30 this morning for Church for Kids, a church service designed especially for kids ages 2 through 12. We invite you all to join us for Church for Kids on Zoom. I will give you the information on how to connect shortly. We will hold the Intercessory Prayer Conference Call on Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. and we invite you to join us. The conference call number is 515-604-9024 and the access code is 120111. Remember, prayer is the foundation for all victory. Are you an overcomer? Then we invite you to join the Overcomers this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for the Overcomers Bible Study on Zoom. The notes for this week are now available at our Connect page at fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com. The Women's Day Bible Study Group will meet this Saturday, September 26th at 10.30 a.m. on Zoom. Rev. Camille Carpenter, pastor of Calvary AME Church in Leesville, South Carolina, will be our guest presenter and will share with us on the topic of dealing with grief. It's going to be a great discussion, so we invite all church members, non-church members, loved ones, and friends to join us. Have you taken time to visit our Connect page lately? It's the most effective way to stay informed with all things related to our church on the local level, on the Episcopal level, and even on the connectional level. It's the one place to go to get everything you need, from submitting your prayer request, to listening to sermons online, to getting information about voting. Log on to fivepointschurch.churchtrack.com today. Get informed, get encouraged, get connected. Here's how to connect with us on Zoom. The web address is on your screen. Please be sure to write it down exactly how it appears and save it because it never changes. You may also click on the Zoom icon on our Connect page. If you don't have a device with a camera or you just want to be a phone participant, just call any of the phone numbers you see listed on the screen and enter the meeting ID, which is also on the screen. Once again, save this information as it never changes. Church for Kids, the Overcomers Bible Study, the Women's Day Bible Study, as well as church school will meet using Zoom. At this time, we would like to wish everyone celebrating a birthday this week a happy birthday. 
we would like to wish Frances Pinckney a happy birthday as she celebrates her birthday on Monday, September 21st. Happy birthday, Frances! We want to send a big shout out to Devon Cohen as he will celebrate his birthday on Thursday, September 24th. On Friday, September 25th, we have two birthdays to celebrate. Brother Eric Bowie and Brother Terrell Hopkins Jr. will be celebrating their birthdays and we wish them both a happy birthday. To everyone else celebrating a birthday this week, we wish you a happy birthday and may God bless you with many, many more. This is Tawana Gladman and these were your announcements for the week. Let's now join in together for this moment of worship through our giving. As uh, we have always announced each week, there are, very, uh, there are several ways, varying ways that you can give to our ministry. If you wish to give us a check or money order, please mail it to the post office box address that you see listed here on the screen. We also invite you or encourage you to go to our website at chapelmemorial.org. Uh, click on the green Give Online button. It'll be the one that looks just like the one that you see at the corner of the screen. Click that button uh, if you want to give that way. Or go to your Give a Fly app on your phone and look for Chapel Memorial Amy Church. You'll find us there as well. Uh, and if none of those means work for you, you can text your offering to us by simply texting 321-234-5005 and we can receive your offering that way. Um, if God has blessed you, won't you consider being a blessing to him by blessing uh, this ministry as we make it our personal mission to do what God has called us to do? Will you join with us as we pray this morning? Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for these gifts that we're about to receive. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel, as well as for the equipping of the saints. Let it become bread for the hungry, as well as shelter for the homeless. And Lord, we will not fail nor neglect to give your name glory, the honor and praise, because it all belongs to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for your offering. Let us now transition to the word of God. I'm going to be coming from the gospel of Luke uh, this morning. And um, I'm not, I can't say in my um, uh, almost 12 years of pastoring uh, that I've actually ministered directly from this text. Uh, but I want to I wanna lift something up in this text today because I, I think it's, uh, there's some things in it that will be challenging to us. This is not uh, a message that I would say... Um, you know, that talks about what we want God to do for us and how God's going to make a way out of no way and all these wonderful things that we like to offer you. But this one has to deal with um, uh, positioning ourselves in terms of service as it relates to the kingdom of God. So I want to ask that you would meet me in the 16th chapter of Luke. I'm going to be reading verses 10 through 13. Luke 16 10 through 13. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And this is what it says. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Today, I want to preach to you from the topic, and it's in the form of a question. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? 
Join me as we pray again. Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to share from your word. I ask that you would give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech that I may be able to rightly divide your word today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As it relates to the, uh, the question, can God trust you? I want to uh, put it in the backdrop that I think most of, uh, most of you can identify with. Uh, as you all know, on this past week, uh, particularly from last Thursday, uh, the NFL started its regular season. And, and we're able to watch football games again. And, and for all of you uh, football fans out there, I'm sure you are rooting and cheering on for your team. Um, and I'm not going to get into the name column or this or that, but if you want to give support to your team at this time, go ahead and put it in the live feed and, 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 and give a shout out to your favorite NFL team that you hope will do well in this season. But while you're doing that, I want to lift up uh, a little story that I'm going to call the tale of two NFL players. And um, I'm going to talk about this particular player who uh, wanted to become a part of another organization. And in order for him to do that, he had to uh, put himself in the position where the team that he is on would trade him. And so it was. They basically um, put him on the trade block, and the team that he was interested in picked him up right away. And as soon as he got there, he began to pledge his loyalty to his new team. Um, I'll let you figure out who it is I'm talking about. Um, so now that he is on his new team, I'm not certain as to whether or not the two teams will play, but he already made it clear where his loyalty is. So it, it, all the affinity that he had with his former team no longer matters to him because he is not loyal to that anymore. He joined a new team, and now he is going to give them the best of his service. And he made promise that he would do just that. Caused me to think of another NFL player who, um, I will admit, used to be on the team that I pulled for. Did pretty much the same thing. But when he got to his new team, clearly he had loyalty issues. And so it did not even work out for him to play not even one down uh, on this new team. They put, he put himself in the, same, in the situation where they had to trade him. In the same offseason now that we're going through, uh, he gets to his new team, his new team picks him up, and he's able to survive one week of playing, just one week of playing, and he's out. Now, no 30, none of the 32 teams have dared to pick him up. He's been wanting to get back in, and I suspect the reason why he had not been picked up yet, and it does not matter how talented he is. It does not matter how him, in, impressive his resume is, and it doesn't even matter how his physical abilities would fit on your team. Uh, no team seem, will be interested in him because he has proven to be one who is not loyal, one who cannot be trusted. So I want to pitch the question to you because you are now on the kingdom of God's team. But the question isn't so much if whether or not if you could trust God, but can God trust you? So you see where I'm going now. Um, Jesus, uh, before I get into the heart of the sermon, I just want to give you a little backdrop uh, where this sermon is coming from. Jesus uh, is telling a story of one whom the, 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 the owner is saying, I'm going to uh, take away your position from you. 
And, and uh, he, he's, this is the story of the unjust steward. And he said, I'm going to take away uh, your position from you. And I'm going to uh, put you out of the stewardship. And, the, and he goes on to talk about the different things that he would make. He would call all of the creditors that owed his boss money. And he says, if you owe my boss this amount of money, tell, uh, I want you to write down this amount. Because when my boss fires me, hopefully you will look upon me with favor and allow me to be able to work for you. Now, the thing about it is that if you are in a situation, in order to provide or care for your family, you got to go to work. You got to have a job. You got to have a means to have an income. But if you have that means uh, to get that income, there's a certain amount of loyalty that you owe that company in order to stay employed. And depending on the kind of person you are will determine your success or failure at that. But nevertheless, Jesus is trying to make a point and he comes closer to the point at the, per, at the portion of our text when he begins to say in verse 10, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in uh, much. So I want you to, 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 to entertain this thought, if you will, uh, for the first point. And I'm going to put it in the form of a question. Since we're asking the question, can God trust you? One of the first questions you have to ask yourself, where is my loyalty? That's the first question you've got to ask. Where is my loyalty? Now, when it comes to uh, what you say that you are loyal to, you have to then uh, acknowledge uh, the fact that if you have agreed to join a specific team, if you've been hired by a specific company, automatically there's a sense of loyalty an obligation that is expected of you because they are offering you a position which gives you greater insight into what they do, how they do what they do, and how you can help them further uh, their business. Uh, many of us, uh, we have entered into uh, contractual obligations, and I'm not, I, I, although I seem to be focused on employment, that is not the only one. Uh, you, you have um, contractual obligations in terms of credit. For example, if you have a, uh, a store credit card and uh, they gave you that credit card under the condition that you will pay your bills on time. And if you are a loyal bill payer, then they will consider increasing your credit limit based on your needs and your spending habits. However, if you are late every month with your bill, they're going to consider you as one that cannot be trusted and will likely lower your credit limit or ultimately take away the credit altogether because the, these companies want to know is where is your loyalty? I'm reminded of a situation uh, where a friend of mine was managing a specific store, but he had grown somewhat uh, uh, uncomfortable or disgruntled with the way things were going and, and whether or not if he, was, he saw a longer career tenure for him in this company to the point where he applied for a very similar job with one of the competing stores. So when he was offered the job, he figured he'd do the honorable thing and put in his two-week notice call his boss and let him know, I want to put in my two-week notice because I want to leave this job and go to another. The moment he told them where he was going, that person showed up, said, give me the keys, give me the manual, you can go ahead and leave, no two-week notice, you can leave now. And the reason why it was done that way, it was because I can't let you work for me while you are loyal to my customer, loyal to my competitor. And as long as your loyalty lies elsewhere when you are part of something else, then you cannot be trusted. 
If you are calling yourself a Christian, but yet you've got an appetite and a taste for the world, so much so that your loyalty is stronger there than it is with the kingdom of God, then the question needs to be asked, can God trust you? Where is your loyalty? Now, if I was to stay in the context of NFL and that the NFL teams and arenas and the question would need to be asked if you are a true uh, Bears fan, if you're a true Packers fan, or if you're a true Cowboys fan, or if you are a uh, true Browns or Ravens or, or Bengals or whatever your team might be, if you're true to that, then the last thing you need to be doing is showing up at my house when we're supposed to be watching the game together and we're joint, we're on the same team, but yet you seem to be wearing uh, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm just throwing names out there. I'm not taking pot shots at any of them. I told you, the you know, you can go ahead and root for your team in the live chat. I'm just trying to make a point. Because as long as you are proving yourself as one who is not loyal, the scriptures here declare that if you can be loyal with the with whatever it is that God has given you, if you can be faithful in whatever it is God has given you, then you are showing God that you can be trusted with more. Sometimes we realize, sometimes we fail to realize that the reason why we have not progressed, the reason why we have not been promoted, the reason why we have not yet advanced is because we can't even show that we have faithfulness or loyalty at the little that we have gotten. And, and we're willing to get upset with this person and that person and say it's the system or it's that supervisor or is this or that other situation there that won't allow me. They're always bypassing me. Well, have you taken a good look at yourself and ask where and oh, where is my loyalty? Am I loyal to anything? Can I be trusted with anything? I know I don't have a lot, but can, can I at least be trusted with the opportunity of whether or not that uh, if I show myself uh, uh, to uh, be loyal to that which I said on paper, can I show up on time? Can I do the job I was being paid to do? Can I stay until it's time for me to leave instead of me sneaking out early, instead of me coming in late? Where is my loyalty? First question you got to ask, where is your loyalty? If you want to know if God can trust you, that's the first question you got to ask. The second question you need to ask yourself, how good is my service? The second question, how good is my service? See, sometimes when it comes to um, whether or not if uh, we are going to, uh, um, when, we, when we get a job, that the person who gives us the task, that we would do that task to the best of our ability. It's not about how we feel anymore. The waitress that comes in to work, regardless of what's going on in his or her life, waitress, female, waiter, male, y'all forgive me. English teachers, forgive me. But y'all know what I'm going, where I'm going. Server, how about that? The server doesn't bring his or her problems to the job. When they, they bring, they come to your table, and after you're seated at your at the table, their concern most is for you. How may I help you? What 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 uh, what would you like to have? When you begin to tell the server what it is you want, the server does not input their opinion on it because their focus is on making sure that you get good service. So I'm pitching the question to you, how good is your service? I mean, the Bible calls us to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And it also challenges us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the Bible says, upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, you can gain a lot of traction, a lot of ground in your faith when you just be faithful to just those two things. Some of us are not good in terms of service when it comes to loving our neighbor. We're better yet 
at cussing our neighbor out. We're better at stabbing our neighbors in the back because we are not good when it comes to serving our neighbors. We like to qualify them first. Are they black? Are they white? We like to qualify them first. Are they Methodist or are they Episcopal? Are they Holiness or are they Kojic? Are they uh, uh or, or, or do they believe in uh, immer full immersion in, in the water or do they do sprinkling and pouring or, or all these little factions that we like to narrow down to determine whether or not if somebody is going to get good service. But I want you to understand, my beloved, that in the restaurant setting, the server does not get to pick, choose or refuse who is seated at the table that they are serving. Uh, it doesn't matter if the server is black and they come and they come to a, a table of a bunch of uh, and just for the purpose of this illustration, a bunch of white people wearing uh, MAGA hats uh, that you still got to give good service. The moment you input your opinion on how well your service is going to be, you're already telling your employer you cannot be trusted. And the thing about it is God has been testing the church in small and little ways to determine whether or not uh, if we can offer good service. And I'm not talking about how good the music is. I'm not talking about the hand clapping, foot stumping uh, that you do in your church. I'm not talking about if your preacher can yell, rail back and hoop and holler and all that other stuff. I'm talking about can you love your neighbor as yourself? That's the only thing he seems to be interested in. Scripture says, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? God is saying, I'm not looking to promote you with your bad service. Bad service and whenever God sends somebody your way, you are more likely to harm or hurt them instead of helping or healing them. And as long as you got bad service, God said, I can't trust you. I know you want money to be able to build bigger and better things for yourself, but I can't trust you. I know you want me to come through for you all the time. Matter of fact, that's the only time I hear from you is when you need something, but I need you to be good at your service and you always giving me nothing but lip service because your service ain't good at all. How good is your service? I'm glad we're having this in time of instruction today because every now and then we need to put away the excitement and basically deal with some hard questions about our character in terms of whether or not if God could trust us. If I don't offer good service, why should God promote me? God doesn't owe me anything. He's been good to me. He blessed me. He woke me up this morning, got me started on my way. I didn't get here by myself or by my own accord because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, but ultimately, it comes down to this. If I fail to offer good service and that which is entrusted to me. Just a little while ago, you saw where the pro tem uh, offered me my pastoral appointment. And I got to demonstrate not only to the person who signed my appointment, but also to the people I was sent to serve. Uh, that I intend to be a good shepherd. I intend to be a good pastor. And even though I'm doing it for them and doing it for the, I'm ultimately doing it for the glory of God because he was the one who called me. He was the one who afforded me this opportunity because if it had not been his will for me to be here, I wouldn't be here. But because I recognized that it was God who allowed me, who brought me to the place in this ministry at such a time as this, I want to give God the best service that I have. So I'm not going to enter, uh, mess up my service with my own attitude, with my own opinions and ideas, I'm going to listen for whatever the Lord tells me to do and do it exactly as he has commanded, line upon line, precept upon precept, doing it exactly the way God called me to do it. And that's what we have to remember. We got to give good service when God calls for us to give good service. That's exactly what he wants. I'm going to give you one more question that you can ask yourself. Obviously, this sermon can be developed even further to help give you the, the tools that you need in terms of evaluating yourself, in terms of being that person, and whether or not if God could trust. 
So here's the last question I'm going to challenge you with. You need to ask yourself, who is my other master? Who is my other master? Well, Pastor, I, you lost me on that one because uh, as far as I know, you know, we're serving God. He's ultimately our master. He's ultimately uh, the one that we're serving. And because we're serving him, uh, we're committing to him. It seems that th your question doesn't really line up because it ought to be assumed that God is our master. But if you pay attention to the text, especially verse, 14, uh, verse 13, that says this. No servant can serve two masters. But either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold, be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, God is well aware of your other master. But the question is, are you? God is well aware of the other master who have put in their bid for your attention. But the question is, are you aware of it? God is well aware of the time that no, you would normally spend with him, but you've taken it and have given it to another. But the question is, who is your other master? There is somebody vying for your affections and vying for your benevolence and vying for your attention and vying for all of the things that will cause you to forget God as your master. And sometimes you need to ask yourself, uh, 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 maybe um, uh, if I was to identify who my other master is, it would reveal more about me than I ever want to know. Because the thing about it is, is that because if we have loyalty and faithfulness issues and we don't have good service, then nine times out of ten, we're not necessarily interested in serving God as our master. We want to be able to tell God what to do instead of God telling us what to do. But the, but but where I want to challenge you, my beloved brothers and my beloved sisters, is in the simple fact that God uh, foreknows all things. And he knows that if you have affection for something or someone else uh, and you put him in direct competition with it, that's why the very first commandment that was written was uh, says, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You've got to get to a point where God becomes your one and only. I know you're, you're, you're excited about all of the attention that you're getting from all of these nice Nice little knuckleheads that keep dropping in your DMs. But if you look among them, you'll see that God wants your attention too. You'll see that God wants to spend some time with you too. You'll see that God wants to be able to date you too. But God is like, I'm not asking for a momentary date. I want a lifelong commitment. I want you to acknowledge me as your Lord and, my, and your Savior. And I don't want you uh, to, to resurrect or lift up anything that I created or that I've given you as a way of replacing me. Who is your other master? Until you get to a point where you can recognize, yes, there is another trying uh, for my affection. Yes, there is something else that is pulling at me that doesn't want me to pray when I should pray, that doesn't want me to study when I should study. There's somebody in my life that every time when I really want to do the things that are pleasing and right before God, they have a tendency of pulling me away from it and causing my attention to be elsewhere when they need to be on God. So God has, has sent me to tell the church, you can't serve God and, 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 and mammon at the same time. And of course, in the text, mammon represents money. And everybody tell you, telling you that you've got to be broke in order to serve God. Nah, that is not the case. There are a lot of people who are serving God uh, with money. But the thing about it is, is that they find a way to make their money acknowledge God. Or they make their money uh, acknowledge that they're about kingdom business. Or they make their money uh, respect the fact that they love God. Where we get it twisted, we ask God to give us more money because we want God to, uh, to, to, uh, we want God to respect the fact that we serve money. Hello, somebody. And I just want to give us uh, some hard truth about this. Uh, I wish we would chase God like we chase a dollar. 
I wish we would make it rain when it comes to manna from heaven and God's word as much as we like to make it rain in strip clubs and all that other stuff. Yes, sir, I went there. And as long as I know I got brothers and sisters uh, making it rain in the strip club, how about I come to your church and make it rain in the church so that the church can do what God has called us to do? Somebody post shots fired. Because the truth is, you're, you're asking God why he won't, why won't he bless you? Why won't he increase you? Why you got denied for the loan? Lord, don't you know how badly I need this loan? Don't you know how badly we, we want to live in this house? Or this, that, or the other the case may be. But God said, but I'm waiting on you to show me your faithfulness. I'm waiting for you to show me your loyalty. I'm waiting for you to show me how good your service is. I want to know whether or not if you are aware of the other master that you're flocking to. The other master that you're bowing down to. The other master that you're trying to serve. And, and God is not trying to hear that right now. Because he's saying that, that, that I've given you a choice. I'm going to sit before you death and life. And I'm asking you to choose life. Because in choosing life, you choose me. And when you choose me, you'll be like the person that, that says, uh, God, give me life so that I may enjoy all things. As opposed of saying, God, give me all things so that I may be able to enjoy life. God is interested in giving you what you need and drawing you closer to him in a way that allows you to be uh, able to answer the question with confidence. God can trust me. And if you're the type of person that, that you're willing to say that, yes, God can trust me. I, I can be trusted with my family, with my children, with my job, with my occupation, with my career. God can trust me. This is not me trusting God. This is God trusting me. How bad would it be uh, out of among the, the several things that we don't want to hear God can't do? If God can't save us, if God can't heal us, if God can't deliver us, how about if God can't trust you? As we close, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about it in a way where if we're considering what God is saying to us in this moment, if we're considering the simple fact that God wants to know if you can be trusted, if you can give your life to him in a way that when he tells you what to do, this is where that dumb questioning God comes in because you're trying to show God that you can be trusted. This is you being the server coming to the table and regardless who's seated there, may I take your order? How may I serve you? How may I worship you? How may I honor you? How may I glorify you? So you didn't, pastor, so you didn't get the appointment that you wanted. Members, you didn't get the pastor that you wanted. Can you still serve God? That's the question. God's goodness isn't measured by the amount of stuff he gives you. It's measured by his extending the opportunities to you. And you proving yourself to be one who can be trusted. You ask yourself, where is your loyalty? You ask yourself, uh, where, oh, how good is your service? And, and who is my other master? Because I don't want God to have to compete with anything. If I've got, if I've got another master, I'm not going to make him compete with God. I'm going to give God everything I have. Pray with me as we end this service. Father God, we do thank you for your presence today. We ask that you, God, would infuse within us a desire to be trust, trusted by you. To be trustworthy. To be faithful. To be loyal to be good servants. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge all the masters in our lives so that we can abase them and bow before you and lift you up as our only master. God, we will not fail or neglect to give your name glory, honor, and praise. In other words, we're saying to you that you can trust us. And if there's anyone among us, Lord, who needs to be saved, we ask, oh God, that you would save them from their sins. Redeem them and set them free. And God, we would not fail to neglect to give your name, glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us. Let's uh, uh, officially close out the service with the affirmation of my faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No one can serve two masters. Question, can God trust you? Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with us now henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. God bless you. See you next week. <laughs>